But Cam, you said Cody Rhodes has something special that maybe some other talent wouldn't have had that that w- wouldn't have enabled them to keep this thing going. What do you think that is about Cody? What is special about Cody Rhodes that allowed this thing to go on further than we thought? Cody Rhodes thinks he's cool. Um, I and listen, <laughs> there, there's 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 something to be said about authenticity, right? Like. I feel like Cody goes out there and pours his heart out and enunciates the way that he does and kisses the babies and has adopted the wrestling club as his nieces and nephews. And for anybody else, that might not seem genuine. Uh I think people believe in Cody Rhodes in that this is somebody who wants to do things the right way for the right reasons. And it doesn't always translate. And it's been you can be a baby face in wrestling, but not really stand for anything other than not cheating in matches. You know what I mean? Cody Rhodes had a genuine mission statement to change things. I think that even if you just watch wrestling as a TV show, looking at the way things were three or four years ago with how the show was presented, who was considered important, and how they were given to us, uh, the audience, there's something different about Cody. Again, in that in this world where we want anti-heroes and everything to be shades of gray, Cody's kind of a white knight and does things that a white knight would do, does things for what the right reasons would be. Um, there's just a genuineness and an authenticity to what he presents. Um, and it's funny, I was talking to somebody a while ago and I was like, man, I think Cody knows how corny he is sometimes. And they were like, no, 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 Cam, that's not what it is. It's not that Cody knows he's Cody. It's that Cody thinks he's cool. And I was like, that's, <laughs> like, that's and this was this was a, a coworker of his a while back. Uh yeah, when, yeah. Uh, when he was in AEW. And they were, I was like, they're like, I was like, that's better than that. That's even better than him like thinking he's corny. He thinks this is cool because it is cool. Like it's cool to kids, but it also doesn't come across as fake to most adults. I think Cody has that in spades. And again, it's just a different baby face. Um, that's been presented in a very long time. And it's not, he can emote over the top, you know, he can, the tears can come out and he can get flustered, but it's not a Hogan style baby face where everything you do is larger than life. And it all seems to come from a place of how can I get you to buy this t-shirt, right? That's not what Cody presents. I'm um, Cody comes across as a nice guy. And that's such a novel idea just to be a nice guy in 2024. I mean, of course, the matches back it up, the promos back it up, the look backs it up. That great song that I almost know the words to. I, I rock music. <laughs> I rock music songs. Hard to remember. I'd be like, I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's funny. I met the uh, the guy who wrote the song um, at, the, at the hotel. And I was like, man, that's some good white people music you made. And he understood exactly what I meant. But again, I think the entire presentation is just so good. And Royal Rumble, Royal Rumble last year here in San Antonio, the Cody merch was gone by the time we got there to do press. The Cody merch was sold out immediately. And again, I think it's just straightforward baby facing. And it's such a crazy idea. Um, you know, I think like on, on a level, it worked for Hangman Page, um, his, his start in AEW, but we just get so little of that and and cody Mm -hmm. this is the other thing i think works i don't think cody's character worked in AEW the way it does in wwe because cody is a stadium act and i always say that is not a knock on AEW. that is just not what they present right in AEW, um in a lot of cases you're gonna get the advanced stats like like Jokic, right Jokic, fantastic basketball player Watching Jokic in person, I've never seen anything like that. He does not run fast. He does not jump high. But everything he does is so precise and exact that you love it. You know what? Sometimes you just want to see somebody shoot threes and dunk the ball. And Cody (laughs) shoots them threes and Cody dunks the ball. But everybody else around him is doing the little intricate things that need to be done, a la a Roman Reigns, a la a Seth Rollins, a la a Sami Zayn. Um, But yeah, again, him presenting this really broad idea of what goodness is and the way things are supposed to be, I think plays perfectly to a WWE audience, and and it's clearly working. That is a very interesting way to describe 
what he does. And to even take it to a further, a, 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 another level, uh, John Cena attempted to do a version of what Cody is doing right now. Now, John Cena is popular than, than, you know, he, he's way more popular than, than most people ever could even imagine to be in wrestling. But to the hardcore fans or to the vocal fans, they did find him corny. To the kids, they loved it. And this is where the merch machine them. came and the T-shirts and the headbands and all that stuff. Like, I understood and I completely, you know, I completely got why John Cena was uh, was still the top guy. But it was clearly a, for commercial reasons for WWE. Like, they didn't want to turn him. It's also a timing because... thing, Garrett. Timing. Go you know, Cena, Cena got booed by, by so many. I mean, it was like 50-50 for a very long time. But that's. That's because look who look who predated him. Look mm -hmm. at what they were in, and then uh, it was it was a molten one. Cena, you know, baby face, baby face, baby face. Two, they went PG. There was uh, people were regurgitating that content. They did not want the PG era of WWE. It was a terrible era uh, in that in that beginning couple of years. So he was instantly rejected. If Cena came out today and he's John Cena and he he's doing what he's doing, I, he would have been. Uh, you know, as praised as Cody, maybe a little bit more, in my opinion. But what I guess the thing that I think that Cody does, like Cody has the opportunity to go, okay, here's what John did. John laid the blueprint for this. I can take some of that because I know that works. N nobody's done more make a wish stuff than, than John Cena, obviously. Right. So that there's the goodness. That's the good human aspect of it. But then he could also see what actively didn't work for John. He dresses more like a professional. And th this goes back to when he was in the Indies. Like, you know, my, my uh, co-host on the Fight Game podcast, John LaRocca, he was dealing with Cody every time Cody came to APW. And he was just like, look, Cody's a businessman. He shows up earlier than anybody. He signs more than anybody. Y you know, he's got favorable rates. He's just an easy person to work with, but he fully believes in what he's doing. To him, going to an indie show in front of 500, 1,000 people was not a step down from WWE necessarily. It was an opportunity for him to present himself to this audience as the guy. Like He was essentially the guy of independent wrestling for that time frame.